mourns Payne Stewart after mysterious final flight. Indonesia looks to improve Australian relations as UN defines East Timor role and Consumer Commission inquiry into Olympic ticket fiasco. From National 9 News, this is Nightline with Jim Whaley. Good evening. Aviation investigators have begun searching for clues to the bizarre plane accident that claimed the life of golf champion Payne Stewart and five others aboard his private Learjet. It's thought they were victims of a loss of cabin pressure. The plane then flew on for several hours on autopilot before crashing in South Dakota. Stewart's fans and fellow pros have paid tribute to the popular and colourful golfer. Robert Penfold reports from the United States. The drama played out live on American television. A Learjet with six people on board, including US Open champion Payne Stewart, was flying out of control across America. The pilots weren't answering radio calls, probably unconscious. Apparently, some catastrophic event happened on board, likely a loss of cabin pressure. Stewart's wife, Tracy, a Queenslander, was watching and phoning the plane repeatedly, hoping to wake someone on board to no avail. And she was trying to raise him on, on the phone, but uh, she couldn't make contact. The plane veered away from the intended destination, Dallas, and headed for the central part of the United States, towards South Dakota. Military fighter jets were sent in to take a closer look. Frosted up windows pointed to below freezing conditions inside the plane. More than likely, those on board were unconscious or possibly dead. It looked as if the uh, front cockpit uh, windshield was either condensed or fogged over. The Air Force discussed shooting the plane down if it looked like crashing into a built-up area, or perhaps sending up a bigger cargo plane to nudge its wing and push it onto another course. But after flying on autopilot for nearly 2,500 kilometres over four hours, it ran out of fuel and crashed into a paddock near Minor, South Dakota, killing all six on board. The next thing you know, it was going straight. I mean, straight into the ground. The Learjet is equipped with oxygen masks. There should have been a warning alarm, giving all those on board up to 15 seconds to get on their masks. If you respond immediately with oxygen masks and start an emergency descent, you have a decent chance. But it, it could, if, if you're not ready for it and it hits you too hard, you, that might be it. You have about five seconds. Payne Stewart was one of the great characters of world golf. His trademark knickerbocker trousers drew the attention, but he always matched the glamour with the quality of his game. If Payne Stewart never backed it up with winning any golf tournaments or doing well at playing golf, nobody had ever heard of Payne Stewart and the guy that wears the knickers. It, it would have been irrelevant. He won 11 PGA tournaments, including two US Opens. The last in June with this, the longest winning putt in the history of the championship. He was a friend to all. One of Australia's champions, Craig Parry, often shared the plane with him from one event to another. Guy, you know, he, he did things to, for other people to make him happy. One of Stewart's great friends, Australia's Stuart Appleby, who lost his wife Renee in a car accident last year, is mourning the champion's loss, along with the rest of the golf world. At least I knew Renee was, my wife was there, at least greeting him, at least seeing him, and at least welcoming to another place. Investigators are still at the scene tonight, but the plane disintegrated when it hit the ground and they're unlikely to find much to show why one of the world's great sportsmen died after a ghostly journey halfway across America. In Los Angeles, Robert Penfold reporting for Nightline. There are signs of a thaw in relations between Canberra and Jakarta. Indonesia's new president and foreign minister both looking for middle ground with Australia over East Timor. Meanwhile, Australia's role in the newly declared UN force is now clearer. Our contingent expected to be less than half the present number of peacekeepers. It's still not certain whether an Australian will be in command. Laurie Wilson has our report. The changeover is expected early in the new year, the next stage in East Timor's path to independence, a UN transitional administration backed by a large peacekeeping contingent to oversee the move to self-government, replacing Interfet, the Australian-led multinational force, sent in to restore order in the wake of the independence vote. I think it's a crucial uh, stage in the lives of the people of East Timor. Whereas Australia has picked up the cost of its contribution to Interfet, the new operation will be paid for by the UN, 
there'll also be a substantial reduction in the number of Australian troops involved. Our contribution's more likely to be between 1,500 and 2,000 rather than the 4,500 to 5,000 we have at the moment in Interfet. While Mr Downer wasn't ruling out possible Australian leadership of the peacekeeping force, he acknowledged that Malaysia, which has criticised Australia's involvement in Interfet, was keen to assume that role. We've made it clear that if we were asked to lead the peacekeeping operation, we would be prepared to do so. On the other hand, we're happy to serve under some other commander from another country. At the same time, there have been the first signs of a thaw in relations between Australia and Indonesia. President Abdul Rahman Wahid says he is seeking to mend the relationship between the two countries and plans to dispatch a new ambassador to Canberra. Despite the East Timor crisis, Foreign Minister Ali Shihab says Australia remains a friend. Australia is our neighbour and we believe in the saying that uh, take care of your neighbour before your household. Laurie Wilson reporting for Nightline. Sydney Olympic organisers have stood their ground over the tickets fiasco, proffering a range of reasons and excuses. But it seems many are still to be convinced, including consumer watchdog the ACCC, which has launched its own inquiry. There's no shortage of people who feel they've been fleeced. Now the ticketing scheme is being investigated to see if there was anything illegal in the process. It is clear that fewer tickets were available than many people thought. The Competition and Consumer Commission has several areas of concern, including whether SOCOG was misleading or deceptive, and whether it advertised tickets which it couldn't supply in reasonable quantities and at the stated price. Uh, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission is concerned that SOCOG may have breached the provisions of the Trade Practices Act. The Commission wants refunds for those who missed out on their first and second preferences. SOCOG has informed the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission that it will be cooperating fully with their inquiry. The Olympics Minister welcomed the investigation and stood by fellow board member Graham Richardson as the former Labor Senator was targeted over his role in the ticket fiasco. And as for those 520,000 tickets SOCOG says it's now found, once they've worked out exactly what kind of seats they are and to which sports, they'll go on sale almost immediately, but at first, not on the open market. We'll go back to those people who missed out and give them the first option on any additional tickets we have for oversubscribed sessions. Michael Usher for Nightline.